Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. You're listening to the Tamar Yona Show here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. What is it like to discover that after being raised as a Christian all your life, you find out that you and your family are really secret Jews. There's a series of intriguing videos on YouTube offering you to take a peek at the crypto Jewish community, specifically here in Puerto Rico. But what are crypto Jews? They are secret Jews, Jews who were forced to convert to Catholicism under the church and the Spanish Inquisition. This show is going to showcase one woman's journey and discovery that after being raised in the church, that she was indeed Jewish. So what now for her life and that of the rest of her family and community? We're going to be speaking with Devorah Esther, and again, she has her story of how she found out that she was Jewish without even trying. She didn't know. Somebody else came up and told her, you do these things, you do those things. I think you're Jewish. Imagine if that happened to you. She's going to be telling her story. If you want to call in, if you want to ask any questions in the chat room, feel free to do so. Our numbers are on our homepage at israelnewstalkradio.com at the top of the page. I want to also let everybody know that we are doing a very special trip to Israel. Uh, If you're going to be in Israel this coming March of 2020, then I am going to be on a tour here that's going to be taking you around all over Israel. And you're going to see things that the regular tourist doesn't always get to see. We're going to show you security situations. We're going to take you to the Lebanese border, to the uh, Syrian border to see what's going on. It's going to be an amazing trip. Go to our webpage at israelnewstalkradio.com and at the top of the page on the right-hand side in the column there, you're going to see the tour for Israel there and just click on it. It will give you all the details with the itinerary, how to sign up. You'll be meeting me and you'll be meeting some of the INTR staff as well. It's going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. always challenging the status quo. Hello, I'm Rod Bryant on Beyond the Matrix here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I want to encourage you to listen each week, every Wednesday at the same time for an amazing show that will challenge you, inform you, and inspire. News, views, and wisdom for the nations here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Don't forget, Beyond the Matrix every week, Wednesday, here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Laura Esther, <laughs> she's the creator <laughs> of the docu-series The Last Anusa. Anusa in Hebrew literally means someone who was raped or forced. And in this is- instance, it refers to the Jews of Spain, Portugal, and other countries under the Inquisition who were forced to give up their Judaism and convert to Catholicism. Her videos she made, and which are available to watch on YouTube, chronicles not only her journey from Christianity to Orthodox Judaism, but also the discovery of her family's Anusim history and the community-wide practice of crypto-Judaism or hidden Judaism till this day in the mountains of Puerto Rico. So I want to welcome to the show now, Devorah Esther. Shalom, Devorah. 
Shalom, Tamar, and bravo. <laughs> you did a great job. It's good to have uh, you on. All right. You know, so, this is the Yetzirah for sure. <laughs> okay. We had a technical difficulty at the beginning of the show, but we're fixing that now. So, uh, again, tell us your story. Where were you born? And you were raised as a Christian. So tell us all about that. So I was born in Brooklyn in the 70s with Gangsters, Studio 54, you name it. Um, you know, I was later, you know, when my mom was starting to, you know, get uh, back on, on the Derek, like we like to say, you know, she found herself in the Evangelical Christian Church, uh, which I think also, you know, was a probably a safe haven for her because if people who know the Evangelical Church, they know that. Um, there aren't many questions asked, uh, so you can kind of just blend in and just, you know, uh, whatever your life story is, your story, who you want to say to is who you want to say to, which kind of fits very well into, you know, the crypto Judaism practice. Um, but I think even as a child, there were a lot of things that that were off, that we weren't quite like other Christians. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. And we are speaking with Devorah Esther. She is the creator of the docu-series called The Last Anusa. Anusa or the Anusim are Jews who were forced to convert to Christianity in the Spanish Inquisition. And there are many, some people say there are even millions of secret crypto Jews today who don't even know that they're Jewish. Some of them are finding out. Uh, it's a whole process here. And helping us to get through this is Devorah Esther. Now, Devorah was telling us about how she was raised. Uh, she was born in Brooklyn, but they had these rituals in her family where they weren't allowed to do certain things because, of course, it was against Jewish law, but she didn't know it because she thought that she was a Christian. And so my question to her before we went to the end of the segment was, did your parents know about these things? And that's why they gave you a look that if you ask questions that were inappropriate because it might, quote unquote, expose you as being a Jew. Did they know that they were Jews, secret Jews, and that's why they looked at you? Or did they just look at you because their parents looked at them and their parents looked at them, etc.? So who knows? It's probably a little both. But I will tell you that my father, um, his family had come from Herona in Spain, which is in the northern part, and one of his great grandfathers was captured after he was discovered in a letter uh, proclaiming the faith in, in the God of Abraham. And of course, the whole family literally overnight fled. Um, so he did know, like uh, our last name is I V E L, which is Levy, right to left, and he did know it was a Jewish name. Mm, but the thing is, because his whole it is, isn't it? And this is the way they kind of like. Uh, I mean, these are the things that they were doing to kind of hide their identity. And uh, he knew that uh, that there was family out there. He had been given to adoption for one of uh, to one of his, I believe, cousins or uncles. Um, and he always wanted to find his family. And of course he died before that could happen. But thankfully they found me. Now, um, on the other hand, my mother, um, her family had a very strict marriage custom in which they only married within the family. And she, in my direct line, actually was the first one to break out. Now, unbeknownst to her, she married another Anusim. So talk about Hashem putting everything and everyone together. Um, so, she uh, was raised by a very strict um, enforced marriage code that if you broke it, you were literally ousted forever. And we're starting to find those family members now who are coming with the same stories that, that really back up what my mother, mother said. And um, I believe 100% that 
she knew because they were teaching her these customs. Um, and I was seeing them as a child. So it was getting passed down all the way. And, and she, I think, struggled um, to say it out loud. And I think there was one time, I think back in, I want to say maybe 2002, that she almost, uh, it, was after, it was following the death of one of my cousins. And she almost literally, there was a fight that was breaking out. She almost uh, said, she, she literally made a statement, I'm tired of keeping secrets and I'm going to tell. And my, my grandmother had made a statement to her and it shut her down immediately. And I, I, who knows, maybe they'll never tell me what was said. Um, but this was the kind of thing that they literally, you know, they have some kind of control over even up to my mother's generation. And again, she's just starting to come out and say the things that I think that she had always wanted to say. It's like, um, but she didn't have any safe place to say it. And I remember on the day that I went through the mikvah for my conversion and I called her and she literally said, you validated us. And I thought that was such a strong statement of all the things that she said, you validated us. And I realized that me going through the mikvah, it's like she said, you did it for all of us. You for know? anybody who doesn't know what a mikvah is, it's a ritual bath. It's a place of, it's where the Christians get their baptism from, actually. That's where it originates <laughs> with the Jewish people. A lot of Christians don't even know that. Um, so I, I'm just wondering, though, I think a lot of people are scratching their heads wondering, but you know, you're free now. You're in, you're living in Western society. There's no more uh, Spanish Inquisition. The Jews live freely. They see other Jews. They hear about other Jews. They heard about Israel. Why don't they now say, whoa, thank God, finally, we don't have to hide anymore and put on these pretenses and we can reclaim our Judaism and, and become Jews again. I think there's a lot of reasons behind that. For And that depends where you are. If you're in these mountainous regions, this is a community thing. And, and honestly, it's funny because in one way, you really applaud their commitment to protecting each other. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it becomes a stranglehold. Um, because everyone knows that if you say if you say one thing, you're not outing yourself, you're literally outing a whole community. And I think what people don't understand is that, you know, when the Spanish American War happened in 1898, you know, Spain left, but they didn't take the the you know, the the Catholic Church with them. And the decree uh, of the alarm uh, the Hamra decree that was actually, you know, imposed upon them was not officially abolished until 1968. So you're talking very close to my age. And, you know, I mean, again, there's an office, you know, the, the Inquisition office, many people don't know, only morphed into another. It's still open. It, it you know, it exists what they're doing and, and their whole job is to investigate claims of heresy. What the punishment is, we don't know. You know, we don't know what that is. So I think that you have a lot of people who are now elderly who are not really willing to take those chances, you know, anymore. And, and, and so I think that there's been, uh, especially post Hurricane Maria, this, uh, it, I, it's, and it's almost sad that I feel like that many of them are making the decision that they're going to die with this secret. Um, so now you have, you know, people in my mother's range who are struggling because, you know, they've been raised in this, uh, in this culture for so long and it's become their way of life. And, and you got to imagine how difficult it is all their life. They've been trained not to let anyone in. They can't really hold uh, deep friendships because it's just too risky. Um, and I think that they feel sometimes that there's a lot of judgment uh, in the way that they were raised. So they don't come out and say these. I mean, again, in the Christian church, it's not allowed for you to marry uh, within your family and her parents were first cousins through the mothers which is allowed in judaism but she you know could not say that to people in the christian church and and i think she i think she had even mentioned that at one point uh, when she was a child um you know because the catholic church did know obviously they knew um and they had called her an abomination and so she really struggled very deeply with saying anything and of course now here she is um you know she's older in life and, and she's really trying to unpack all of those feelings and then you have my generation who is saying i 
can't be complicit in this anymore. I can't live this way. I've seen how it destroyed you. I see how it's destroyed my grandparents. I can't do this for my kids. And I think so there's been a real shift. But of course, you know, this is not a, that we're making a better decision than they are. I think it's just the time. I think it also has to do with just the time that we're in, in just the whole process with Hashem. Um, so I think that there's a lot of reasons behind why people just don't say, uh, let's go to Eretz Israel. Besides the fact that they're, you know, they spent most of their lives, their, their ancestors proving that they were Christian, and now their children are having to prove that they're Jewish. So, you know, in a way it's a tikkun, but it's a very difficult, you know, to say, just go to the land of Eretz Israel. It's not that simple because there is a lot more to it. And it's not, there is, in other words, there's no safe place for them to go still. So they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Hmm. Well, we'll talk about that in the next segment, but we have, we have two more minutes for this one. I just want to say someone in the chat room was asking here, weren't these Jews called Moranos? Now, I just want to uh, emphasize here, Morano in Spanish means pig. And this was what they were called. They were called pigs by the, the church of uh, any Jews that they suspected of converting, but keeping their, their uh, Judaism secret, they called them pigs. And, you know, today where we don't have to accept that label, uh, they've changed that. And instead of being called Moranos today, pigs, they're called Anusim, people who were forced, people who were literally raped. They were forced to give up their Judaism and convert and, and to give up uh, everything. Otherwise, they would have been killed. And this is what the anybody who's done any research on the Spanish Inquisition to see how horrible it was, the torture that they did to Jews, the killings, the burnings at, at the stake, the confiscation. Uh, of their homes and their businesses and, and their fortunes. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible period that lasted. Uh, I remember I was in Spain, uh, Devorah. Uh, we mm -hmm. had the first, we made the first bar mitzvah for uh, Jewish U.S. Uh, Air Force men in front of the synagogue in Toledo in Spain uh, after 500 years. It was, it was on Hanukkah. It was the first time we lit Hanukkah candles in 500 years in Spain, Baruch and they Hashem. had taken it was it was 19. <laughs> at, let me see this that happened in 1492, uh, right? So this was 1992, right. exactly 500 years later, and it was when Spain officially took it off the books that uh, the 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 Inquisition laws. So it was something uh, very very dramatic, and we, we, we did that with the Chabad rabbi there as well in conjunction with them. And uh, it, it was an amazing thing. You would think that in 1992 was the first time after 500 years that, I know. <laughs> that Hanukkah candles in, were, were lit publicly there in, in Spain. All right, I, we have to go to a break. I want to remind everybody, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to either call into the show. This is your last chance to do so. Or you can write them in the chat room, and I will uh, try to read those out if I can. And we're going to find out uh, more about... Uh, how you can watch these videos yourself again? They're short videos. They're only a, a le they're less than I think around ten minutes each, and mm -hmm. very dramatic, very interesting. They all leave you on a cliffhanger until you're <laughs> saying, "I want to watch the next one." And there's a, I think around ten or a dozen videos you can watch at your leisure. Very very interesting story, and you're going to want to hear about it. We'll be right back. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel, Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power.
All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. What is it like to discover that after being raised as a Christian all your life, you find out that you and your family are really Jewish. Our guest today is Devorah Esther. She's the creator of the docuseries, The Last Anusa. And she's talking about her journey to Judaism, what it's like for the crypto Jews or secret Jews, Jews who today still are raising their children as Christians, but still keep their Jewish customs and some of them don't even know why. She's here answering our questions. And during the break, I was t- t- uh, mentioning to uh, Devorah Esther that Christopher Columbus had a special little signature, a little uh, design that they used to make, I-, I understand, at the end of their names. And this is how Anusim, or secret Jews, would be able to identify each other because maybe you know you have to you have to connect somehow, and this is the way that they can know ah this person's a really secret Jew it's safe with him or maybe I can marry my my kids to them whatever it was, and Christopher Columbus Columbus had this and it's it's thought that Christopher Columbus in, uh, indeed was a Morano in those days that's that's what they called him or and uh, one of the Anusim and uh, Devorah you were telling me about Christopher Columbus that. That he is my 14th great grandfather. <laughs> that is amazing. What, so you have yes. like your family tree all the way back? Yes. Yes. And so this was part of the reason why they really preserved this bloodline. Um, and it's actually documented that his mother, whose name was, I believe, Suzanne Fanterosa, was proved to be of Jewish origin. Um, so it, it is very, it's very interesting. And I got to tell you that this was. Uh, uh, it, it was funny because at first it was like my mom used to say, we're rumored to be descended. And I think when all the, the information and documents started becoming available online and you can trace all the way up. And of course, it was easy, easier for them because they stood in such a concentrated area. Um, it was easy to trace back, uh, you know, all the way to him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, and my son happens to look like his son, Diego, at almost a, a carbon copy. And a lot of people who have seen both pictures, who know my son and who have seen uh, Diego Columbus, they they say it's like a Gilgul. That's how close they look to a each Gilgul's other. A Gilgul is like so. a, a like a reincarnation. Uh, so yes. they, you're talking about a painting of, of Diego. Uh, yes, there's, it's, there's a painting of Diego. And uh, but what I tell you, it's the spitting image. Hmm. I mean, when I saw it, I had to take a seat. Wow. I literally had to, and I had to take a seat. And so so have my friends and, you know, the rabbis who know, you know, my son and, and they know what he looks like. And uh, it's like, really, it's crazy. It really is crazy. OK, so I have to mention here, I don't know if you've heard of the book, but I want to encourage all of our listeners as well. You must, must, must get your hands on the book called Jewish Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's written by Edward Kritzler. I actually interviewed him several years ago. Uh, I had him at my house for Shabbat as well. He's a Jewish man who had also never kept a Shabbat before in his life. It was the first time he ever kept Shabbat when he came to spend it with me. But he talks about the whole history of Christopher Columbus uh, and Pirates of the Caribbean that were Jewish, and Mm. it was basically the Jewish people's... um, escape from Spain. They say that Christopher Columbus, when he wanted to find, uh, when he found the new world, this was his attempt to be able to escape the inquisitors to, mm-hmm. to, uh, he left on the last day, uh, possible. It was on Tisha B'Av and he was there and he even had, uh, um, other conversos with him as well. He did. And, and they were trying to find a place that was safe for the Jews. It's a whole big thing. I can do another show on it maybe one day, but you must get your book, uh, get your hands on that book. All right, getting back to your story, because we only have like another seven minutes here. Um, you were telling me that the uh, communities are still afraid to come out. That only now it's just a little crack, a little crack yes. in uh, into the communities there. And you're saying that good people are getting caught up in this. What does that mean? So I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of politics involved, which, you know, I never want to be in coming out. uh, I I never want to be part of the politics. I always want to be part of the people. You know, I'm back, right? I'm back. 
And, you know, as far as the rebuttum can see that, you know, if my family chooses to come back, you know, they have a way to do it. But there's all these other people that I can't pretend like I never saw or I don't see what's going on. And I want to make sure that people know that, you know, there are people fighting for, for them behind the scenes that, um, that I, I really hope Besrat Hashem, that they hold on to Hashem. Don't look at anything else, the politics. Keep looking at Hashem and nothing else. At the end of the day, for everyone that's listening, you have to know that this has to be about the people and not the politics. And when you do that, you will find such a treasure. Um, and I hope that they will come out with their stories. I, I hope that mine will not be the last one. And I really anticipate, um, you know, very shortly, and just again with the time of the Geula, uh, you know, in process, that a lot of these people are going to be coming back, and they'll be coming back with amazing stories. But I think after uh, what you'll see, especially in these videos, which which you'll start to take away, is that these people never forgot Hashem, although they feel like in some ways that they've been forgotten. Um, and I think that's again a part of the reason why it, you know they're getting caught up in this. And I think some of it is. Uh, just the narrative that's been put out there for so many years. Um, and I, you know, I really hope uh, for their sake, and again, for their sake, that, um, that more and more people will educate themselves about the reality of what's going on to Jews in the world today, and that they will get involved in helping them, whatever way that is. And there's a big process. It's not just uh, learning how to be a Jew, but it's also breaking that mentality of the way they were raised, of the Christian, uh, you know, ideology. There's a lot of things that go along with it. So it's very complex and it takes a lot of patience and people with a lot of love in their heart to, uh, to open up to them. Mm. Now, you, you were saying that at the beginning of the show that you went to the mikvah, that you converted, but as being a, a, one of the Anusim, uh, <laughs> Do, what what is the process? Do does a do, do they are they considered Jewish and they just have to go to the mikvah to for a spiritual cleansing or do they have so to go I'll through a whole So I'll be quite honest program? with you. Mm -hmm. um, I came back through a Haredi Sephardic means, right? So when I and I and, and you'll see and you'll hear it in in the videos, you know when I came that first video that that first visit, um, the rabbi said right then and there, I mean you guys are Jewish. Like there's no question in my mind that you guys are Jewish, and we and he was able to, to determine that because of the customs, uh, and and which I don't put out publicly because I want people who come forward to the rabbanim to have these authentic stories. But we were able to quote customs that he knew weren't Googled customs, mm -hmm. like, and they were very. You can tell that these were things that you would find in the oral tradition, and they had to have been passed down. And so because there was such detail in, and this was before the trip to Puerto Rico and the, before the trip to Spain. So before all of that, there was enough there. And so, you know, the way they handle it is, you know, you, you're, uh, you, can, you convert simply because, you know, when your children go to get married, you don't want anybody questioning this. You don't want anybody, you know, um, you know invalidating your, you know, your, your return which I got to be quite honest with you, when I came, you know, and again, you'll hear this in the story, you know, I was very ill. I was like two weeks in remission from an illness that almost claimed my life. Um, and I got to tell you that I, I remember crying to Hashem that I just wanted to be back. And I didn't care about titles, that if it was a return or it was a convert, I just wanted to be back with Am Yisrael so badly that I didn't care. And I would have done it. I would have I would have become a convert even if I didn't have this family history. I would have done it still. Hmm. I really would have. Because in the beginning of your journey, I remember in your videos, you were saying that you weren't really even interested in, 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 in being a Jew. No, because I, you know, I said, listen, I have my own way of thinking. And I really, you know, for myself had bought the whole Kool-Aid. So imagine how hard this whole process was to really break all those things. Mm. And, you know, but again, when you start to read the works of the Rabbanum, you almost feel, I think, and I don't know if this, you know, maybe other conversos will, will feel this way or, you know, but I almost felt like they were writing letters to me personally. 
it, I felt like it was that personal. It was such a connection. And I just long to be back with, with Am Israel. I long to be with Hashem, reconciled fully. And I, I, I knew that in my learning that everything that comes to you comes from Hashem. So if this was the way that he chose for it to happen, I accept it with all of my heart, with so much love and and. Again, like Devorah, I, I'm going to stop you here because we're coming mm-hmm. to the end of the show and people want to know where they can find your videos. So you can find them on YouTube at Gimel Dalit 777, which is G-I-M-E-L D-A-L-E-T 777. I encourage you to watch them. I encourage you to share them. I encourage you to speak to, you know, your neighbors, your bunum, you know, any, your, your children, like, I think you should speak about this to everyone. And it doesn't have to be my story in particular, but everything that you learn, I think that you have to educate um, the people around you because these people are going to be coming out soon. Um, and, and I think how that, many? that are people, there millions, how, how many do you think? I got I got to tell you that, um, People with my story, with this exact tight lineage, I think you're going to find them in these remote places. Okay, you know what? We have to hold it there. We are going to uh, give you a link where the show is podcasted to her video so you can watch them yourself. And uh, there's an email there where you can contact uh, Devorah Esther as well. Devorah Esther, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your thank you for personal me. story and letting us know more about the Anusim, the Jews who were forced to convert and still are in hiding and uh, in secret today. Thank you. Thank you so much.